Hi, welcome to 90% Knitting. Today, this is um, episode 158, and I'm Lisa, your host, also known as Fibernymph on Ravelry, Clerk, and Instagram. Today is Friday, April 3rd. So happy Friday, April 3rd. We're in April now. Um, I'm a little scattered already this morning. It's early. It's about 920. It's not as early as it was last time, but I have a lot going on today. So I'm going to try to get through this um, fairly succinctly and quickly. Succinct isn't always my thing, but we'll see what we can do. I am deep in show prep mode right now. And so that's one thing I need to get done today. And I also for some reason, I am on a sneezing fit this morning. Last week it was coughing. Today it's sneezing, and I think things are just starting to bloom. When I took the dog out earlier today, um, all of a sudden everything looked greener. Like the grass looked greener. There's still not a whole lot on the trees, but um, the grass definitely looked a brighter green than it was yesterday. So things are starting to happen out there. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, let me introduce or say hello to some people who introduced themselves on the 90% knitting board. There was Sharon. She is from Newfoundland. Jerry from Utah and RJ from Pennsylvania. She's actually not too, too far away from me. She's out in my side of the state. So hello to all of you. Thank you for introducing yourselves. <sighs> Sorry. I didn't <laughs> I thought maybe I was going to sneeze again. Um, anyway, thank you for introducing yourselves. I always enjoy that. Um, before I get into the knitting, I want to make an announcement that I should have made last time I recorded. Um, however, I hadn't actually read the message yet. I was really behind on messages. So let me tell you about it now. I'm sure you've probably already heard about it from several other podcasters. But it's about the Wooly Trot 5K, which is a virtual 5K that's being spearheaded by Rain Lover, who is Sarah. She's of the Raindrops Knits podcast, I believe. She changed the podcast name. That's why I'm wondering. I, I've watched it. I just can't remember what she... I think it's Raindrop Knits. Anyway, um, basically, it is a virtual 5K, which means instead of everybody who's participating running in one place at one time, um, you have a window of time. You have one week to complete your run and submit your time, um, May 24th through the 30th. Um, there are no prizes based on speeds. Um, but, or, you know, your times. Prizes are going to be given by random number generator to those who submit their times. Um, and there are options on the funding site. Um, I think it's an Indigo, it's a blah, 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 um, yeah, Indiegogo, um, site. So I will include the link for that in the show notes. Basically, um, I'm not going to read this whole thing that she sent me, but basically from what I saw on the site, you know how those fundraising sites, there's different levels that you can contribute at. The very basic level, I believe, is $5, and that's simply to participate. That gives you a chance to participate, submit your times, and thus be entered for whatever drawings um, end up happening. And then there's other sponsorship levels as well, and I can't remember. I think they're for like a badge, a t-shirt a bag. Some of them are a combination. Um, there were some bigger like sponsorship things that you like, you could have co your company name or whatever, your business name on the t-shirt, things like that. I think the, um, the stocking at zombies did that. So anyway, it's a really cool idea. I have not yet decided how I'm going to participate in this. I'm not a runner. I don't enjoy running. I could walk it. You can, you don't have to run. You can walk it, I guess. Um, I don't know. It's, I, I'd like to do something with this. It's that week is going to be a really busy week for me. Um, at the end of May. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still, I'm still contemplating it, but I wanted to let you know about it since I did have the information last week. I just didn't have a chance to disseminate it to you since I hadn't actually read it yet, but now I have. And like I said, I will put the link for the Indiegogo site. Um, it's basically www.indiegogo.com slash projects slash wooly dash trot dash 5k. Um, but I will put that in the show notes so you can go check it out if you'd like to take part. All right, let's get into the knitting. Um, I have a finished object, mostly finished. The knitting's finished and the ends are all woven in. I finished my fish head hat. <laughs> He's so cute. He's huge though. <laughs> oh, that's not straight. 
Um, yeah, I think, you know, I knit, oh gosh, this is not happening well. I knit this on US 7s according to the pattern. And for, this is not on straight, but you're getting the idea, right? You've seen these before. He doesn't have his eyes yet. That's the only thing he's missing. But anyway, I knit this on US 7s using my cozy base, which is my worsted weight base. I think I could have even gone down to sixes and just to have gotten a tighter gauge. Um, Cause sevens is the size I usually use for um, cozy. If I want like a, a nice fabric, that's not too open. This is fairly drapey fabric for a hat, I think. So even though it is a slouchy hat, cause you've got the tail hanging off the back end and everything. It was a super quick knit. Um, like I think I said last week, it was one of those patterns that I had to actually start to just do and trust the pattern as I went along to make it happen, to make it, because I was having such trouble envisioning <laughs> how things were going to happen, but it was all super easy. And like, you're not like even putting the fins on and everything, they're easy because you're picking up the actual stitches. You're not like knitting a piece and sewing it on or anything. It, it works really well. And the tail was even quite easy as well. It's not, it wasn't difficult. Um, there's some seaming. You have to seam the tail pieces together at the end, but otherwise that's it. Um, he's going to be a sample on my show table next weekend at um, an inner fantasy. I will have eyeballs on him by then. I may knit another one of these just to try to get a better fit um, because I have a friend who would actually really enjoy wearing that particular hat, but it's super huge. I mean, it's big on me. So anyway, I know it's going to be big on them, but it's a finished object. And that pattern is by Thelma Egberts. It was a free pattern from Nitty Winter 2008, I believe. And that was my cozy base in the Here Fishy Fishy colorway, size US 7 needles. Okay. That was my only finished object. I had hoped to have one more, but it didn't quite work out. Um, I am though in the home stretch on the second Fruit Loops sock. I really thought I would have these done by this week, but I didn't. I'm on the toe of the second sock. So I'm about halfway through the toe decreases. Just need to finish those up. And then I need to put in the heel and then it'll be done and there will be a pair and I can give them to Heather, which is the, my, one of my yarn helpers and I'm knitting them for her. Um, so you may not actually see these depending on, you probably won't because they will definitely be done before the next time I record and I will probably gift them to her prior to then, but I'll take a picture so you can see them. Um, but you can see the one, so you know what it's going to look like, even not on a stock blocker. Um, this is the, my Fruit Loops colorway on, um, my bounce base, plain vanilla sock, just my plain vanilla sock with an afterthought heel. Knit those on US 1.5s, which is my standard sock knitting needle usually. So anyway, progress. I really, this was like my one project other than that fish hat. I really focused a lot on this because I was trying to get this finished. Um, the other things I've worked on, I did pull out the Atlantic Current socks and I started working on them a little bit more. I didn't get a whole lot done, but at least I'm back on it. You can see my little marker there. Let's see, where are you, marker? Make my finger move in the right spot. <laughs> That's where I was last time you saw this. So I've only added like probably not quite an inch. But once the Fruit Loop socks finish up, this will be the next sock that is going to get like my concentrated sock attention because these have been on the needles the longest and I always already have one finished. Here's the finished one. If you recall, um, it's been done for quite a while now. Love how they're knitting up. Absolutely adore this yarn. Um, the Atlantic current socks, the pattern is by Melissa Tuttle Sibley. The yarn is journey sock in the Feria de Valencia colorway by, um, Unwind Yarn Company. And actually the last time I looked on Dana's site, there was some of this in stock. Um, I don't know if there still is because that was several days ago that I looked. Um, anyway, they're coming along. And again, US, probably US ones. I don't have it written down, but probably US 1.5s. That's what I generally use. Might be on my project page. Probably is. So I made some headway on that. Um, I did not work on the expanded community sock that I am kind of doing as a knit along with Disa. She's way far ahead of me, but I really, I have too many socks on the needles right now and I really want to finish some that are older 
And then once I can get to that one, I can't wait to knit it because that's going to work up really nice. But I did, however, put a little bit of time into my Age of Brass and Steam. Um, this is sort of the mindless knitting. Well, actually, the socks aren't overly taxing. Um, but anyway, again, here's where my I was last time. So I've added about an inch to this. The rows are really long on this at this point. I did actually end up looking up the pattern again just to see if I was doing anything wrong because remember I told you last week I didn't have the pattern. I was sort of winging it from memory and from what I was reading on here and I did realize the, I was doing something wrong. This is one of those patterns that you end up increasing, doing edge increases both rows like right side and wrong side. You only increase along the spine on the right side but you do the outside edge on both sides. And I hadn't been doing that on the pearl back rows. So there's a tiny little segment here. <laughs> you really can't even tell, but it's like right here, I think, that was not um, increased both ways. I don't think you're really gonna be able to tell when it's done. I'm not super worried, about. I'm not at all worried about it actually. Um, but I'm still enjoying that. I love these colors. They just make me so happy. And like over, no, nope, over here, I've been doing this for so long and I still can't get the directions right when looking at the camera. Over here, I love this wide swath of orange that happened. That just like makes me so happy. The orange followed by this tealy green. That just, that is such a cool run of yarn right there. So anyway, this is Schuller and Stahl um, Limbo Color. This is all I have left of the third ball. So I'm almost three fifths of the way done with this puppy. Um, let me pull out one of the full balls. This is Scholar Install Limbo Color in the colorway 2539. <laughs> Very exciting. I have two balls left, so I don't know how much longer this will make the shawl since, oh geez, things are dropping. <coughs> <coughs> I guess I'm coughing today too. I think it's just allergy stuff. Um, anyway, yeah, it's coming along. This hasn't gotten a ton of work. Cause like I said, the rows are getting really long and I'm working on it mainly at night. And by the time I get through like two rows, I'm tired and I'm ready to go to sleep. So <clears throat> this will be ongoing for a little while, but it's fun and I'm enjoying it. Uh, let's see what else. And I'm doing that on US seven and age of brass and steam is a pattern by orange flower yarn. Sorry, I'm going to take another drink. Just coffee today. Um, sorry, my hair is like all floofered from that hat. Okay, what else? Um, hey, I'm going to apologize while I'm thinking about it. If you look behind me, you can see my ironing board here, <laughs> which 98% of the time is not used as an ironing board. It's mostly used as a horizontal surface. That's like where I pack orders. You can see the tissue paper. I pack my orders there. I put ball bands on there. I, I, it's a multi-purpose surface. Um, occasionally I do have to move all the yarn stuff so I can iron something, but ordinarily not. I usually move it that way though. <laughs> so it's not in the background of the shot, but I wanted to get started and get this done because I've got people coming over in less than a half hour now to help me do yarn stuff. And I wanted to get this done before they got here. So I just didn't bother to clean up. I'm sorry. Um, okay, let's see what else. I told you I did not work on the expanded community socks. I did not work on the mama vertebrae. I had a very kind viewer write to me and offer to finish my mama vertebrae for me. And that was very sweet. And I did write back and thank her. Um, unfortunately, I don't want to do that just because the more I think about this mama vertebrae and where it's at, I really think I'm going to try to come up with some sort of lace panel to put in the back of it to give it some visual interest. That is my latest thought on that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to just wait and see what I do with that. I'm either going to do that or I may, might take that one, that skein right there, that light colored one. That's also the same yarn, the Elsbeth Old Silky Wool. I might take that and put some striping in it. I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. But anyway, it's just going to sit on hold for right now while I figure out what I want to do to make it a little bit more visually appealing or visually interesting. Um, again, I did not work on the design socks. I don't know what it is about me in designing. The busier I am in all other areas of my life, suddenly designing sounds like a great idea. 
and it never is because I'm already busy. So the design stock is also on hold right now. Um, as is the Rambler cow isn't on hold. I'm still kind of just working on trying to put the pattern together in a reasonable, readable way. I'd still actually really like to knit a second one of those to take with me to the show next week. So my fingers are crossed that I'll get that done. And by the, if I can do that, then I'll be able to release the pattern as well because it's going to get out later. I had wanted it done by the end of March. Obviously that did not happen. So if I can get it done by mid April, I'll be really happy because we're kind of getting out of cowl season now, obviously not that you don't knit that kind of stuff all year round. You can knit it for gifts or just have or whatever. Ugh. anyway, the best laid plans. <laughs> I did not do any spinning, so that beautiful Unwind Yarn Company uh, Swirl BFL fiber is still sitting out there by my wheel waiting to have attention. But I'm telling you, this week has been all show prep all the time, and that's what it's going to be pretty much up through next weekend when I go to A Knitter's Fantasy. Plus, I'm really working hard on two wholesale orders, so my, uh, my downtime is at a minimum for anything. But... Well, let's talk about the stranded cap, <coughs> the stranded colorway knit along. It is done. We finished that up on March 31st, and yay, there were some really wonderful um, submissions to that. Thank you so much to everybody who participated in that. Um, I hope you remember to post your finished objects both in my threads and in Melissa's um, since she was co hosting. I'm going to do, I already actually did the two drawings and the only reason I did them ahead of time with the random number generator was because I did not have time to keep up with that thread and make sure that everybody who was submitting something actually was submitting something that was started and finished within the time frame of the knit along. I try to do that as we go along so that at the end I can just do the drawings online or while I'm recording. Didn't get to do that this time. So I... I did the drawings ahead of time, verified that the projects that won, the people who, whose projects won, that, that everything met the parameters of the knit along rules. Um, so without further ado, the two winners. Um, well, first of all, the first prize that I drew for was is one of my Knitter's Choice Color Work Kits, which is a collection of four mini skeins, 100 yards each of my bounce base in whatever four semi-solid colors the winner would like. Okay, so that's, it's a full skein of yarn, 400 yards, but it's four different colors. Um, so the winner for that was post number 24, who is LZH, that's her username, and that is Louise from Nor North Carolina. And sh her winning entry was her Winter Trees Mitts. They were really, really pretty. So congratulations, Louise. Please PM me and let me know um, what four semi-solid colors you would like in your Knitter's Choice Color Work Kit prize. Um, and also send me your mailing address so that I can ship it to you when they're ready. <laughs> um, the second winner was post number 85, who was Well Woman, and she's in the UK, and her name is Isabel, and she won with her project, the Sheephead Hat, which I also did. Coincidentally, Well Woman is actually the one who won the yarn for the Sheephead Hat from me back whenever I did that drawing back in January. Do you remember I did that good giveaway for the yarn since I knew I had more than enough? Well Woman was the one who won it. I thought that was so ironic that <laughs> she won the yarn and now she's won a prize for having her finished hat. So congratulations, Isabel. The random number generator really likes you. So, and I love your hat. It turned out great too. So it's so much fun to see those. So Isabel, please PM me and let me know what two colors of semi-solid worsted weight yarn you would like to have for your flurry kit. And just as a reminder, this is what the flurry pattern looks like. So you will get the two half skeins of worsted weight yarn and you will get a coupon code to download the pattern for free on Ravelry. So anyway, congratulations and thank you to everyone who contributed um, projects who knit along with us for that. That was a lot of fun. And thank you, Melissa, too, because that was actually her idea. Um, to do that knit along and I'm glad we got to do it together. So yay, we're done with that. Um, I do not have an official knit along that I want to do this month. 
Um, we're already into April anyway, but I did have an idea and this is what my idea is. And here's where it's coming from. Recently, I've been purging my sock drawer, um, my hand knit socks, because a lot of them have holes in them. I've had, so you know, I've been knitting socks for quite a while now and I wear the bejesus out of my socks <laughs> and it's usually the balls of the feet for me. I don't get holes in my heels so much, but the balls of the feet that I tend to wear through. Well, it was to the point where like I was still wearing them even if they had holes because I would just run around the house in them or whatever. But then the holes were getting bigger. And sometimes it would just be one of the socks that would have a hole. So I would wear its non-holy mate with another sock that its mate had a hole. So I had mismatched socks. Um, I'm at the point now where I've just purged at least eight pairs of socks. I've called them from the drawer because they are beyond just even wearing in any way, shape or form. But the cuffs are perfectly fine. That's what makes me crazy. So I had this idea. I'd like to do a repurposing challenge. Okay. Here's how this is going to work. And this is not just for socks. So let me see if I can explain this. Well, I don't have this written out. I was thinking about it yesterday. I and I will write it out when I put the post in the, um, in the group about it. This is not like a knit along. This is just something fun <coughs> that we can do together if you want to. I don't know if there will be prizes. I'm really not planning for there to be prizes at this point. Again, just something fun to do. Um, the repurposing challenge. If you have socks that have holes in them that you can't use anymore. Or maybe you have a huge bag of swatches from projects. I've got a huge bag of swatches, believe it or not. I don't always swatch. I used to swatch a lot more than I do now. Um, but I've got a huge bag of swatches that, what am I going to do with them? I mean, they're just little swatches. They're weird sizes. Some are lace weight, some are heavier weight. Um, or maybe you have a sweater that you started knitting and then decided you didn't want to finish knitting it, but you never frogged it. Um, like I have the pieces to the Cal Calvados or Caldavos. I can never remember. It's a Thea Coleman sweater that I knit years ago, got the front piece, like the pieces are all put together. The only thing that's not on there is the collar and the ball band. Um, and it does not fit me. It was way too small, even though I knit the size that I should have had Apparently I didn't swatch for that one, but I've got it there. I don't even have the yarn for it anymore. I think I got frustrated and I, you know, de-stashed the rest of the yarn. I guess I figured I would just rip out the sweater at some point. I don't know, but it's in a drawer. It's sitting here doing nothing. So if you have things like that, my challenge to you is find ways to repurpose your yarn, your yarny things. And I don't, the only thing I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about ripping them out, like my Calvados or Caldavos, sorry. Um, I'm not going to rip it out and reuse that yarn. For this particular purpose, that's not going to count. I would love to see your creativity in how you can repurpose thing, pieces that are already knit. So for instance, I've had this idea with the socks of just cutting the cuff parts off and opening them up so I would have flat rectangular pieces and then stitching around the edges so they don't unwind and then stitching them together kind of in a blanket form and then backing that with some sort of soft material to cover up all those messy edges and then like maybe just doing little tied knot quilting in it. I just thought that would be really fun. It would make a nice little lap blanket or a pet blanket or something like that. Or you could do the same thing on a smaller scale, you know, cut your cuffs off of, um, off of your socks and don't open them up. Just leave them in the tube form. And then somehow you could like sew the top and the bottom and make coasters, you know, repurposed coasters. Um, what else was I thinking? Swatches, same thing. You can, st I've always had the idea someday I was going to take all my little random swatches and just stitch them together and come up with the funkiest, weirdest, like blanket in the world. Um, or you could even make it something smaller, like the cover for a pillow, like a throw pillow and just have a really funky throw pillow with a pretty piece of fabric underneath it. Um, those are the kind of ideas I'm thinking of. The other thing for the socks, so I've had a lot of sock ideas because I've been thinking about the socks is, you know, cutting, again, cutting the cuffs off, which the cuffs are the good part, and grafting them together to create like a big long tube scarf 
Wouldn't that be crazy? I don't know. These can be serious ideas. They can be funny ideas. I just want to see what you're able to re to craft with something that you're repurposing, something that you have knit or crocheted in the past, um, and it is no longer functional as its original intended item. Maybe it was never functional as its original intended item, like my sweater pieces, um, but you've decided to repurpose it. Maybe it's something that you can felt. You know, I've heard of people going to, um, like, thrift stores and picking up wool sweaters um, and felting them into purses and things like that. Now for this purpose, I'm not asking you to go buy things at a resale shop. I want you to actually use knitted things you have because everybody's got some swatches laying around, right? Um, and for mid, well, maybe if you don't knit socks, you might not have socks, but try to be creative. You know, try to use what you've got. Um, maybe if you don't have socks. Maybe you know somebody else who's got dead socks that they'd be willing to share with you for the purpose of this. Um, but I'm going to open a thread in the 90% Knitting Group where we can share ideas because I am sure there are probably tons of project ideas out there even um, already. But if you've got ideas or whatever, I would love to see them. And then um, I may open another thread just for you to post your picture. Or maybe I won't since this isn't a knit along. It's not an official knit along or anything. I don't know. I'm, ooh, what I might do, I may open a separate thread. Here, that's what I'll do. There'll be a chatter thread. Then there'll be a separate thread where you can post anything that you have crafted from repurposing your knitted stuff or your crocheted stuff, whatever. Um, and I'm not going to do a drawing, but what I think we will do then at the end, maybe I'll have you guys go into that thread and vote on which... Um, thing you think is the most creative or the funniest or maybe we'll do something like that just for some fun. April needs to be fun, I've decided. It starts with April Fool's Day, which honestly isn't necessarily a fun day. <laughs> it can be, but not always. Um, yeah, let's just do that. So pay attention to the thread where I will hopefully get all of that spelled out a little bit more cognizantly than I just said it. And um, we'll take it from there. So it's the repurposing challenge month. Um, and I will say the guideline is that whatever you repurpose, at least approximately 50% of it should be made out of um, your previously knit item. Around. I'm not obviously coming to your house to measure. <laughs> but, you know, use your best judgment. I don't want you knitting something new to say that you're going to repurpose that. You know what I mean? It has to be something that you've that is already in existence as of right now and you're going to repurpose it. So, all right. New to me podcasts this week. I watched um, Never Cast Off. I watched Soul Stitcher. I watched EIN Knits. And I watched Suburban Stitcher, who her thing on YouTube comes up as Diane Brown. That's her name. But I don't know if it also comes up as Suburban Stitcher or not. But anyway, those are four new, pod new to me podcasts that I watched this week. Um, and they were very enjoyable. So you might want to go check those out. Um, new things. The only new thing I have is a swap package that I got. It was, I'm taking part in the Soulful Stash swap um, that um, New Hampshire Knits and um, Fiber Trek were doing together. And I got my swap package in the mail yesterday. Um, and mine came from Carrie, who is from Serenity Farms. So I got a very special package because not only did she send me some soulful stash, but it's actually soulful stash from her own sheep because she's got Corydale sheep. So look at this beautiful skein of yarn. <laughs> Isn't it just lovely? It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. She said it's about 250 yards. It looks like it's probably about a heavy fingering or maybe a sport weight. I'm not sure. I'm going to say a sport weight probably. Um, but it's gorgeous and it smells wonderful. And this is a blend of her Corydales and her neighbor's alpacas. So she said this makes an excellent sock yarn. Um, oh, actually, is it two skeins? Oh, it's two skeins. <laughs> I thought this was like one big long skein. Oh my gosh, I just noticed that. I'm so dorky. dorky. Anyway, so two skeins. <laughs> there they are. Um, and there's this little tiny sh wooden sheep stitch marker. Isn't he cute? Which was also apparently made by someone locally. Um, and then 
she also sent me a little sample of some fiber, which is of a couple of their colored Cordales. It's just beautiful. And the only other thing that was in here, I don't have it with me, but it was a an article, like a write-up thing that she had written up um, about Corydales. And it was like three pages long, huge, informative, wonderful article, but it's in by my bed because I was reading it last night while I was in bed before I went to sleep. So anyway, um, this was just fabulous. I love this natural stuff and it's so much fun. I don't even know that I'll dye this. She mentioned the fact that I could dye this. I don't know that I will. I, I love the natural color. I don't know. I'll see what it's going to turn into. But it's so soft and squishy and lovely. And Thank you, thank you, thank you, Carrie. Again, thank you. Um, that's fun. Her package, I did not get out on time. It was supposed to, it was supposed to go out by the end of March, but there was sort of a delay in getting the pairings up, the partners paired up. And I didn't want to buy anything for my stuff swap partner until I really knew that got to know them and talk to them so that's what there was sort of a delay and then there was a delay in the shipping of my item that I ordered for her um and so it's almost ready to go out now so hopefully I'm going to get it out over the weekend um I have a couple of other new things coming in the mail but they're not here yet so hopefully I can show those to you next time um other than that that's really about it. That's all that's going on. Um, Chris and I, my son, have moved on from the Harry Potter movies to the Hobbit movies. <laughs> Last weekend we watched the first Hobbit movie. I think this weekend we're going to at least watch the second. We'll see how that works out. Um, the only other thing is I gave myself a self-imposed timeout day this week. I have been so scattered, so stressed, so everything um, lately just because how, how busy I've been and some personal stuff going on and just like... <sighs> I needed a day. And so it, I don't, the, I can't even talk. <laughs> it is really unusual for me to take any lump sum of time off from working this close to a show, especially if I have other stuff going on too, like these wholesalers. Um, but a friend recommended to me that I really needed a break. <laughs> so the opportunity arose and I took it. And so I had one day this past week where I pretty much, I did nothing. Actually, it was Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? I don't remember what day it was. Oh my God. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I did nothing. Seriously, I didn't work. I didn't even knit that day. I relaxed. I tried to stay away from home as much as I could. I actually sat at Starbucks, got a drink. I sat at Starbucks. I didn't knit. I didn't read. I sat. I listened to the music. I enjoyed surroundings. I know it's Starbucks, but still like I needed that day. It felt wonderful. So anyway, yeah, of course, then you come back and you dive right back in, but sometimes you just need that time out. So anyway, that was it for this week. Um, and moving on into shop news, cause I'm going to keep this brief. Um, I'm good. I did the first quarter finished object drawing as well already. And the winner for that was Beagle Mom Knitter. She was entry number or post number 68. And that is Angela from Virginia. And she, her finished object was a beautiful sweater. It's the Stonewall sweater. And she knit that. Talk about, I'm telling you coincidences here. She knit that out of the cozy base that she won um, as the sweater lot drawing for the um, head to toe knit along last year. Remember she was the grand prize drawing winner. So she won the sweater lot of my cozy base in the, and she chose earthenware red. So that's the sweater that she entered for her finished object for this quarter. And now she's won the $25 gift certificate too. I've never had this happen before. And I just think it's so funny. So again, the random number generator loves you, Angela, apparently. So congratulations. Um, when you hear this, please PM me and I will get the information for your gift certificate to you. Um, just to let you know, the minis of the month pre-orders for April did go up on April 1st. And where are they? There are still some available. So if you didn't get them yet, you can. Um, the striping skein is called Growing Peas and Carrots. It's a three striper. But the color, I'm never getting this color right in here. Let's see if I can get the light to shine. Yeah, put it in the screen. Oh my gosh. Am I making you guys dizzy? Because I'm making me dizzy. Why can I not get these to focus? Oh my heavens. 
All right, well, hope there we go. Too close. So growing peas and carrots, and then the semi-solid is a medium dark brown that I'm calling dirt brown. Um, these are each 80 yard skeins, light. 80 yard skeins. Um, these are pre-orders, so they will ship out by the end of April. Um, the listing, I, like I said, is still up. There's probably at least half of them still left, so you can go ahead and order some if you'd like. Um, those are up. And the only other thing is I will be vending a week from tomorrow at a Knitter's Fantasy in Youngstown, Ohio. It's at Cheney High School in Youngstown, Ohio. The market is set up in the gym. And the market hours are 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So that's Saturday, April 11th. I am really looking forward to this show. I love this show. Um, I've gone, this was my fourth year maybe? I can't remember now. I think it's my fourth year doing it. Um, it's always a, a wonderful show. Great vendors. Um, so if you're in the area, please come out. I am bringing as much of my current, like my newer colorways that have been popular as I can, as well as some of the old standards. Um, I've been asked by several people, will I have Neon Cat there? I will have a very, very small quantity of Neon Cat. I may have two Neon Cat sets. <laughs> uh, I'd hope to have more. I just haven't had time to dye them. So, um, But there will be a couple. So come fast, come early, come quick and grab them and you get them. Um, and then, of course, after the show, whatever's left over, I will use for the next update, maybe two updates, depending on how much stuff is left over. Um, and that update will be on Friday, April 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Weird to be talking about something that's going to already be happening after the middle of April because April just started. <clears throat> anyway, I will not be podcasting next week. Next week is just going to be crazy, crazy, crazy. So I'm going to take next week off from podcasting. However, I will podcast earlier in the week, probably that Tuesday um, after the show, so that I can um, let you know what's going to be in the shop update, you know, show you everything, and... Um, you'll be ready for that. So no podcast next week, um, but there will be one early the following week prior to the shop update on the 17th. Um, other than that, get your minis of the month pre-orders in if you'd like some. Um, and I'm, I'm also, I was, oh my gosh, the talking, as well as dying for the show and for the wholesale orders. I'm also still working on, um, Special orders. People have already ordered. Oh my gosh. I need more coffee or something today, but I need to stop talking <laughs> is what I need to do right now. So I'm trying to go too fast because I know I have a time limit. Anyway, I am going to go right now and I will see you hopefully at a Knitter's Fantasy next weekend. Um, and if not, then I will see you when I podcast that following week. If you celebrate Easter, enjoy and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.